Okay, hello everybody. This is uh, Rob Furman and my buddy Keith Reeves, and we are we're set up in the uh, debate style, side by side, and um, we're looking forward to having another conversation with you. October is uh, anti-bullying month, and there's a lot of bullying campaigns and things like that uh, that are out there for for educators, and and obviously the the concept of bullying all really hits home uh, with public education, and we certainly tackle that um, issue quite often. Uh, with that in mind. Though Keith and I have uh, some comments and thoughts we'd like to share with you in regards to this, and um, you may be surprised at my reaction because I think I have a little different spin on that than your average. That's really interesting. Uh, yeah. So why don't we let uh, Keith get started here? Then I'll tell my story about it. Keith. Interesting. Um, well, uh, it, it's tough because I want. I, there's two sides of it, right? There's adult on child bullying and then child on child bullying, but. Um, I transplanted schools in 1986, uh, right towards the end of the year, and I went from going to school in an inner city school on the east side of Syracuse um, to a little suburban school I had never been in, and um, many of the people out there, they may have noticed by now, if I open my mouth all the way um, and don't do anything else to my face, You'll notice this side of my face is paralyzed. It uh, happened during the course of my birth, um, back in the days when we used metal forceps. And unsurprisingly, I have a big head. Uh, it's because of my brain, not That's because right. of my arrogance, I swear. Um, but anyway, uh, it was a, a birth, a traumatic birth injury. It's actually the same injury that Sylvester Stallone has. Um, but anyway, when I was younger, it was much more pronounced. And uh, I experienced uh, not only bullying, but child-on-child -child violence when I came as the new kid out of nowhere, and here I was. And I was a weird little kid, and uh, my mom used to say I was born at age 40, so I was very talkative, and I had an overdeveloped vocabulary. I used to read to myself in a mirror to make myself look normal enough to go to school. Um, not intended to be a sob story, but it, 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 it reinforces the influence that children can have on other children. And so I had a really tough time when I got started in the suburban school district as a transplanted kid. Nobody knew me, and here I was, this weird-looking alien boy. Um, so I can safely say that I've experienced that firsthand. As a consequence, as an educator, I take it very seriously when I see another child hurting another child. We know from every bit of research that Alice Miller ever did that uh, shame is a tremendously destructive force in the lives of children in terms of their cognitive neurodevelopment. Um, so I think we have a moral responsibility as educators uh, to make sure that we prevent bullying whenever, however, uh, we possibly can. And I couldn't agree with you more. I'm going to tell you my story because uh, you and I, we've always said, I think we, le we lived parallel lives <laughs> in, another, in another world. I think maybe we were brothers or something because we really do always realize how our stories gel with one another pr pretty amazingly, actually. Um, I'm sure, as those of you that are viewers uh, have seen, just like Keith, I have a tendency to blink and twitch and nod. And the more the more ramped up I get, the more I start playing with my shirt, playing with my tie. You know, you can you can see my adrenaline starting to roll. Um, so I was a blinker, a twitcher, and a nodder. They call it Tourette's. Um, I, I never bought into titles of whatever it's called, but uh, that's what the doctor called it. Um, I am on medicine for anxiety and things like that to try to slow some of these things down. Uh, you should see me when I'm off those or when I'm eating chocolate and caffeine. Oh, it's a bad scene. The, um, but I'll tell you what, and I got relentlessly bullied, relentlessly bullied um, about this. Uh, it's, it's a very easy attack. You can see it. Uh, it happens all the time, and um, kids can be mean. Um, the difference is this. Um, now that I'm 44, right, now that I'm 44, and, and I look back on it, at the time it was horrible, but now that I look back on it, you know, it, it's sort of, I don't think I would trade that experience for the world, because it's defined me um, in very odd ways. Um, I still twitch, I still nod, but yet I get up in front of national audiences of 500, 1,000 people, and I speak, and, and, and I'm a very confident individual, and I do these things. I mean, I'm putting myself out there for the world on YouTube to watch this all the time, and I still know I look silly when I'm doing these things, but I think going through the experience of surviving the bullying, having extraordinarily supportive parents and teachers made me a very confident child. 
I don't know, having not been bullied, I guess I can't say, but you know, I don't know how a kid gets confidence without having to overcome those things. I'm sure there's ways they do it, but myself, I gained my confidence through overcoming those bullying experiences. Again, the, the caveat here is that you can't get through it without the support of your parents and the support of the teachers and those adults that are saying to you, okay, they're being mean, but you know deep down in your sock, deep down inside that you're good at what you do, you're a smart kid, and they would build my esteem up to the point where I was so confident where it didn't really matter what these kids said. Not that not that we shouldn't stop them, not that that shouldn't happen. I mean, obviously, all of those things. We don't want kids to be bullied. But I also think that there's another take on this from a parent-teacher perspective that, you know, yes, we want to stop them, but we can also help that victim become more confident and, and almost counteract the, ne- the negativity and make it a positive. Look, you are an extremely bright kid, very talented. You're doing wonderful things. Who cares if you blink? Thoughts, Keith? I think I hear where you're coming from. I, I thought we were going to have a disagreement just then, but it's actually <laughs> not. Um, so th- I think the two summary points that you gave are most important. One is we have to stop it. Well, right? yeah, well, we have to. Um, and then certainly we need to provide support networks to make sure that we are helping children who are the victims of child-on-child violence, be it you know verbal, uh, psycho-emotional, physical, or otherwise. Um, Something that you said triggered, it's an analogy that I've used before, and I don't know if I put this in the first book or not, um, but it's an analogy and a description that I use often that I think points directly at what you said. If I take a small tree, if I take a sapling, and I take a big rusty nail and I drive it right into the tree when it's young, this does not necessarily suggest that the tree is going to wither and die. It can kill the tree, but it is theoretically possible that the tree will grow up to be a big, healthy, strong tree. But it, if you look at the xylem and the phloem around that, it had to grow and develop around this wound. Oh. And the wound is always an essential part of its not only its historical growth, but it's right down at the base and had tremendously far-reaching effects. So that goes to your oh, suggestion that certainly we need to provide support for children that have been victims of this. But one thing that I would be loathe for people to take away, and I suppose that's why I want to interject this here, and and I, I want your thoughts on this particular thing. I don't believe that toughening up is necessary for child development. I don't think we see that in the literature. And I think we have enough evidence from particularly Miller's research that suggests that all forms of trauma are bad for kids. So while I'm not suggesting that kids can't grow around it and grow up strong in spite of it, which we both did, um, I still think that eliminating it outright would be best for kids. I'm not sure there's a psycho-emotional or a cognitive advantage to overcoming trauma. No, and, and I certainly don't want to put into the curriculum bullying 101 and, you know... <laughs> You have to get bullied at least once in your lifetime. To yeah, because that's that bootstrapping, toughen up kids right. thing. No, that I, just I, hate. I don't. I, I I didn't mean it to be a toughening up. I meant it to be a live through. Gotcha. Uh, you know, gotcha. yes. I survived. I guess is, is a better term than than sure. necessarily thinking I tough. You know, it did toughen me up. I mean, I've had as a principal, I've had parents call, look me dead in the eye, and go, "There's something wrong with you." And you know, it doesn't phase me. So I do have a tough. <laughs> So that that was sort of a side benefit, but but honestly, it's not the toughening up. It's the I don't know if we're always going to be able to be there to stop the bullies, but if you can arm the kid with a, with an extraordinarily strong self esteem base, that that their confidence will overcome those things. Mm-hmm. That I think is is the is the answer or at least part of the answer. Um, makes sense. You know, and, and I think if we look back in history, um, especially back in like the early 80s when self-esteem was very important and, and we were really working on boosting children's confidence, and I was a child of the 80s, I believe you were too, yep. um, you know, we had curriculum even that was a part of the, you know, you are a good, strong person. And we worried about a kid's self-esteem. And gosh darn it, people like me. Yeah. <laughs> And all of a sudden, it became this like 180 where, you know, you can't get a participation trophy because you're not good enough. You didn't earn it. Um, not everybody gets a win. And all those like negative. Yeah. And, and, and we could, did away with self-esteem. Like it wasn't important anymore. And I think that the, at about the same time we did away with 
helping kids boost their self-esteem, all of a sudden bullying became an issue. Now, is that a coincidence? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, that bootstrapping mentality, which often is associated with uh, there are certain sociopolitical strands, and we'll just leave it at that, right. um, that really do believe that, you know, we'll suck it up and bootstrap, and if you can't cut it, then you deserve what happens to... That's an inhumane, by definition, an inhumane attitude, and I do think that they're directly related. I think we see it in the politics, we see it in the news, we see it in social interactions. This idea that people should just tough it out and deal with it, I'm sorry, that's not community-based attitudes, and that isn't how we developed as a species. For, t- for roughly 150,000, 200,000 years of of, of this, the history of our species, we lived in multi-generational mixed groups. We were a communal uh, organism, as it were. And then after, I actually do write about this in the book, after World War II, we sold America the idea that the white picket fence isolated nuclear family was the way to live, and now we have this isolationist, almost bootstrapping sort of mentality. And I don't think that the evidence or the literature suggests that it's good for kids. So I do think that there is a case to be made but there's a correlation between suck it up and an increase in bullying, whereas approaching things from a more communal environment, really working on giving kids that framework of self-awareness and having the relative perception of themselves distant from violence and trauma, saying, no, I'm, I'm a person, I count too. That's not an invalid lesson to teach kids, and I do think we've lost something by throwing that whole thing out, the baby with the bathwater. Yeah, and, 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 I, and I completely agree. Um, at the end of the day, I think what you and I are saying to sum this up is um, teachers, you know, maybe we need to look at helping kids um, boost their self-esteem and making it making it a, 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 um, a cognizant uh, in the front of your mind type of impact with the children um, to, to, to help them. Uh, increase that 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 sense of confidence and that sense of self worth, and um, you know if you and the, I think the second point we're trying to make is if you are a victim of bullies, you there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and and that you can you can get beyond that and be successful. Is it still with you? Yeah, it's with you forever. I mean, it's with me forever. I know it's with you forever. We've talked sure. about it, so it's not going to go away. But that doesn't mean that you can't use that very unfortunate experience to your advantage to become a a very strong, confident individual. Yeah, to use a phrase we use in the queer community, it gets better. It gets better. (laughs) Yeah, it'll get better. Well, hey, uh, thank you, Keith. Um, Is there anything you want to say to to wrap up? No, I think that nails it. I would encourage anybody who's interested in looking at classroom models that kind of speak about the thing we're talking about to look at Responsive Classroom. It's a terrific framework that really does deal with creating uh, communities of learners, and that's maybe a topic we'll tackle another day. (laughs) Yeah, and another one I want to tackle sometime during this month is um, cyberbullying. Yes, uh, we we'll definitely hit, do that. We didn't hit the. We, we hit the, This is more the skin on skin type of bullying, but you know, there's that whole world out there of cyberbullying that I think is the same in a lot of ways, but drastically different. And I'll even go so far as to say worse. Um, so, so, so I think maybe that'll be one of our next topics. All right, sounds good. All right, uh, for the seditionists, I'm uh, Rob Furman. This is Keith Reeves. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you subscribe below and comment, and um, thank you very much.